Hello, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today we'll be taking a look at how to configure some settings within the Pebblehost loader. The Pebblehost loader allows for various settings to be applied to your server. These settings will only apply when your server starts or restarts. To view the Pebblehost loader settings, you can go to your server panel and click Pebblehost loader. Once on the page, it'll provide you with a list of configurable options in which we can enable or disable or change some settings to to apply to our server. The first setting we're going to take a look at is automatic reboots using slash restart, as well as restart on crash. If we were to go ahead and enable this, what this does is enables the slash restart command. This also means if the server were to crash, it would go ahead and attempt to restart it using the slash restart command. Now keep in mind, this does not apply if your server were to crash for running out of memory. The next setting we'll take a look at is redirect from and redirect to. These two settings will actually go hand in hand with each other. And essentially what this will allow us to do is take our subdomain, if we've set one up, such as play.myserver.com. And obviously I'm just using this as an example. And we can redirect our subdomain to our website. So uh, the subdomain is play.myserver.com. So our redirect, and we don't have to use this redirect. We can use whatever redirect we'd like, um, but we can have it redirect to myserver.com or if we wanted it to redirect to google.com, we could do that as well. So this will allow you to redirect your subdomain over to your website if you're to enter in your subdomain into your browser. The next setting here is a bit complicated, but we'll go ahead and go over it in pretty good detail to give you a general idea of what this does. Essentially, this is the heap limiter setting. As you can see, we have a few different options here. So we have option one, in which is enabled by default. We have option two, which is 300 megabytes, and option three, which is 600 megabytes. Now, the heap limiter setting will remove memory from the heap space. Heap space is the memory in which is used to store plugins, world data, mods, and other things like that. So by removing heap space, it will increase the amount of memory available to your meta space. So for example, if this was a 16 gigabyte budget server and we wanted to enable the heap limiter setting for option three, which is 600 megabytes, what we would do is go ahead and just type in the three number right into the field. And what this will do is make it so our heap space is 15,400 megabytes, but the meta space is 1,240 megabytes. So like I said before, this setting is really useful if your server is running out of memory, especially with smaller servers running the newer versions. What tends to happen is because that server does not have enough memory to begin with, you can kind of encounter some issues with running out of memory. And this setting can sometimes help you resolve the running out of memory issues. Keep in mind, if your server is still running out of memory, even with the heap limiter enabled, more than likely you'll need to upgrade your server plan. The next setting we have here is enabling UTF-8 encoding for your server at startup. And this essentially allows for some special symbols and characters to be used by your server in which some plugins and mods may require them. So if a specific plugin or mod does require this, all you would need to do is go ahead and hit enabled. Otherwise, it's really not necessary to have this enabled. The next setting here is removing the 20 second out of date wait for spigot based servers on boot. This is actually fairly useful if your server is kind of taking a very long time to start up and you see a message in console saying it's waiting 20 seconds to notify you that you are running an outdated version. This will remove that message and just force your server to boot. The next setting here is upgrading between versions of Minecraft using the dash dash force upgrade flag. And what this will allow you to do is essentially upgrade your server's version to a new version if one is available. And keep in mind, this will only apply if your server is either restarted or started. The next setting here is enabling a forge timeout flag. And this is very useful if you are running a forge server. Um, it will allow you to have a increased timeout flag. So for example, if this server was running Forge and we wanted to increase that timeout amount, what we can do is simply just type in two to give ourselves 120 second timeout. Or if we need something higher than 120 seconds, we can go ahead and enable setting three, which will give us 240 seconds. By default, it is enabled. And typically you don't necessarily need to enable this just because you have Forge, but it can be useful for certain mod packs or certain Forge instances where you do have issues with timing out. The next setting here in which we'll actually go ahead and take a look at is the boot your server into a plain rescue mode version. And what this will allow us to do is put our server into rescue mode or a clean environment into where we can ensure that there's nothing going on with the server itself. 
So if we were to go ahead and enable this and click Save, we'll go back to the main server panel page and restart our server. As you can see, currently we're running paper 1.16.5, but if we go to the server console, it's going to boot our server into rescue mode. Now it does say we will need to disable this in the Pebblehost loader configuration once we are done um, with rescue mode. So what rescue mode essentially does is puts your server into a clean environment and starts your server up with paper 1.8.8 which is a version that doesn't consume a lot of resources and is extremely well optimized. Keep in mind, this does not erase our files or anything like that. In fact, if we go to the file manager here and we have a look, um, we should see right here the rescue folder that's been created. And as you can see right in here, um, there's the rescue.jar. So what the server is essentially doing is booting up from this rescue folder. And all of our other server files are listed right here. None of them will be hurt or affected by this because the server is using this directory to start our server. So if we need to do anything to monitor the server itself or uh, potentially see if a plugin is causing an issue or if it's the server itself, rescue mode is perfect for that. The next setting right here is the Java version. Now, by default, it is automatically selected. However, for some of the newer versions, or especially with these 1.17 pre-releases that have been coming out, you may need to select Java 16 as Mojang has moved from using Java 8 to 11 and now the version 16 for that 1.17 version. The last setting here is ACARS flags. And what this will allow us to do is trial ACARS flags for 24 hours. This will apply to our server upon the next restart whenever we click this button. So our server will run with ACARS flags. And if we like ACARS flags or we see an improvement with ACARS flags, you can go ahead and create a billing ticket. And someone from the staff team would be more than happy to discuss with you on how to go ahead and permanently enable ACARS flags. So one other thing to note is the Pebblehost loader settings are actually stored within the pebblehost.yml uh, file here. So if we go ahead and open this up in the file manager, you can see that all of these settings are configurable right here. So if you're editing your server from an FTP client or anything like that, you can actually change all of the settings directly from this file as well. Um, but you still will need to either start or restart your server to apply those changes. That's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join the Pebblos Discord and we'd be more than happy to help you there.